So let's see this processing performance first. What we are doing now is measuring the performance of tabular engine, tabular database with 100 million transactions and very few 250,000 dimensions. The average processing time, which means how long does it take to get data from the source, in this case, SQL Server, to the destination, tabular uh, engine in memory, then we have uh, the average is 500 seconds. This time is quite well. I have a very good uh, disk and memory. It's not server level, but it's okay. Now, doing the same exercise will take me twice that time, 1,000 seconds. Then I, I made this uh, data structure even harder. So this is not simple. I will explain why this 100 million is not simple. Regardless, the average row size is very small, 150 bytes. But when I, I put 50 million rows only into the engine, into the database, but uh, I created 50 million dimensions, which means one transaction, one document number. Forget about direct credit, it's a demo data. Then, then the, the total number of bytes in the row size is going down from 150 to 90 bytes, which is fine. This is exactly what tabular needs, like less data uh, or less columns uh, that's performing well for tabular. So I process the same data, 100 million rows, not the same data, but 100 million rows in 300 seconds. Okay. Now, uh, multi-dimension has problems with dimensions. Why? Maybe you have seen, okay, when when uh, dimensions and facts are not processed the same way, and uh, dimensions are using distinct. So multi-dimensional engine fires distinct against the source, and this is really not good. There are probably other ways to do and process data faster. However, if you want to work with every SQL version, that that's the function available. So with less data, it took more time, 1,500 seconds. So that's behind architecture that is quite different. We have here a column store, and in here we have a row store, and uh, the engine do not work the same. So the, what is, uh, is it is a real life situation? I would say no. This is an example where uh, more data doesn't really matter that it will process uh, Lower, slower or faster, really depends how this engine works. And uh, then, it's a, then we have a question that a SQL engine has a data warehouse, where is a source, is in this uh, test made from row store. All the data are in the row store. What if we put this data into the column store? What if we would compress already this 100 million rows in a data warehouse and load the data? Would that work faster and actually focus on this table here the result is the same so column store doesn't bring any advantage if we process the uh, source on column store then we get the same result for tabular and very the same or similar results also for the multi-dimensional so regardless on the row store or column store that's not the case that it would affect uh, our processing time and why it is so because actually column store is good when we are doing some calculations some aggregations or if we uh, it's good also for compression but this compression is not used for retrieving the data because we retrieved all this data and we bring this data into the analysis services so for that reason we didn't get any uh, any advantage there is one more uh, processing option available, uh, and uh, we can process data in the cloud. We are using Microsoft subscription, and these are the three different tiers that are available for processing data. Developer, basic, and standard edition. So we have been testing the same 100 million row model in the cloud. So first thing, we have to forget what happens in the on-premises. This 500 uh, seconds is pretty much irrelevant. Okay. And uh, we are testing this uh, processing on developer tier, B1 and B2 from basic tier, and few standard uh, 
options in the standard tier. Now, what is important is the performance. This is CPU slash memory slash IO performance in one KPI that uh, this service is offering. So we get 10 cubus for D1, 40, 80, 40, 100 for different tiers. And this is what is important for us, how much memory it is. And of course, it's important also how much it costs. Now, what is interesting, uh, when we are processing in developer edition, this was actually not processed because our data was 2.4 GB and this cannot fit into the 3 GB of memory. So when we look into the data size, we need at least double the size of the source data compressed. So that didn't fit. And when I was loading in partitions and if I interpolate this uh, processing time, approximately this is how much it would take okay then all of these tiers b1 b2 s1 s2 process pretty much the same regardless we are paying five times more for the s2 so what's wrong here actually nothing is wrong but we are not using these resources while processing that's it and uh, doesn't matter what is in the source in the source we have changed different uh, uh, service uh, from uh, you know what is in the data what was doesn't really matter the key performance is what you have in the target destination here and why is this such a big difference between the standard and the base if you look into the feature actually developer is is having everything so it's like enterprise edition basic is comparing the feature uh, to standard to on-premise world standard and standard is also having the enterprise feature so you are not buying uh, or paying for performance always starting with standard you get also the enterprise feature so how can we use this feature by processing uh, data by partitions and you can see that immediately using only four partitions the processing went down so what is then the conclusion of you know how much uh, what kind of subscription we would need if you're using there for the dynamics in the cloud and you would like to you know think how what kind of approach is the best one so first it's not only about the processing time this is when we are loading a data maybe once or twice a day it's also important the query time in inquiry time this can be important higher tier gives you better performance and it's also a question when these costs are occurring because processing once a day, twice a day, and if we have a virtual machine, we can post the virtual machine in data warehouse and analysis services must be available when we are browsing the data, probably at least 12 hours every day, right? So you take this into the account and especially your data structure so that this data structure will fill into the memory and then you will make the right decision. So how can you come to the conclusion? The best thing is to do the test. And that's the, the best uh, you know, advice that we can give you from this. Test your data, test your structure, try to do different scenarios. It takes you about 60 seconds to, to create a new analysis services. Uh, and it takes you about 20 seconds to move from one tier to another. So when running this in a few hours, you can really know what you can expect from starting plan a little memory grow over the time and you will you will know.